everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back today to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be looking at the high pressure fuel pump, camshaft, and cam follower for the BPY engine code. The BPY engine code is the 2 liter turbo that came in the earlier generation. This is actually our first direct injection gas engine in the United States. And man, these were so common, you know, a few years back. We don't see them quite so much today, which is why it took me so long to round up these parts for you guys. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is DeutschAutoParts.com. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. They have awesome service, great prices, a million and a half, it seems like, DIYs. They sell a really cool stud kit for uh, making it easier to remove the high-pressure fuel pump to check the cam follower. So check them out, DeutschAutoParts.com. I'll have links to all that stuff in the show notes for you guys so you can check them out. All right, so what does all this nonsense do? Well, this is the intake camshaft. This opens and closes the intake valves as well as has the cam position sensor on this end. On the opposite end, it has the lobes for the high-pressure fuel pump. Because direct injection requires such high fuel pressure, Volkswagen had to add a mechanical pump in addition to the electric fuel pump in the tank. So the electric pump pumps fuel up to the engine. This guy creates the high pressure fuel for the direct injection system. So how does it work? Well, the camshaft is driven actually by a chain on the exhaust cam. As the camshaft rotates around, this lobe pushes the plunger in and out of the high pressure fuel pump and that creates that really, really high fuel pressure needed for direct injection. But the more important and fun thing is how it fails. Um, I've seen every kind of failure with these parts. I've seen these followers worn completely through, like this one. I've seen them just a little bit worn. I've seen them cracked. You name it, I've seen it. I've actually seen the metal pieces of this get into the timing cover and cause damage to not just one, but both camshafts to the adjuster on the exhaust cam, as well as the oil control rings inside the housing. Typically the weak point of this is the follower. So weak metallurgy in the follower, especially the original ones, would begin to wear this lobe on the camshaft here. As that happens, it actually creates more wear on the follower, eventually wearing all the way through and damaging the fuel pump like you see here. Catastrophic failure can occur with pieces of metal from this follower getting inside the timing cover housing. So what might we experience when we're having these type of failures? Odds are you're gonna get a check engine light. That check engine light can have faults generally due to, well, fuel pressure. Um, I've seen several of them. There's a technical service bulletin that lists out a bunch of them. But pretty much if you have a check engine light, you have an FSI engine, and you have fuel pressure faults of any kind, this is really the best place to start. You can also have absolutely no power. Uh, hit the accelerator, the car will go, but it feels like, well, oddly enough, you're not getting any fuel, or maybe even something like a boost concern. You can get noise, believe it or not. As these are banging together, they'll create some weird noise. I've also seen this happen and cause no start concerns, and again, as well as pretty much any fuel-related uh, check engine light faults could be related to this high pressure fuel pump. How do we diagnose it? Well, we can go through all the test plans and check everything, you know, like the, the technical service bulletin says, which is of course what all Volkswagen technicians do every single time. We can follow flow charts given to diagnose the faults, or we can take off one valve, three bolts, and maybe a triple square on the bottom. Some of them have a hose on them, which is actually a hell of a lot easier when they have the hose because the triple square is really soft. But we take those off, we remove the pump, and we go, huh, there's a hole in this, and there's not supposed to be. Or you'll see damage on the lobe of the camshaft as well. Um, this one was an extreme failure where it wore all the way through into the high pressure fuel pump. That doesn't happen every time. If you can catch it early enough, you actually don't need to replace the high pressure fuel pump. You would only replace the follower as well as the camshaft. We can also go in with our scan tool and monitor fuel pressure via measuring value blocks, but again, this is way faster. And odds are, again, if you have any kind of fuel pressure related faults, this is probably the issue. Um, it's not the only problem that can happen causing fuel pressure faults. You can also be dealing with something like in the tank pumps, as well as the fuel pump control module underneath the back seat. But again, it's so fast to take this off, and these are so common to fail, that I think most guys just jump right in and, and pop this off and take a look at it. So when might we see this fail? Well, with the miles these cars all have on them now, odds are at some point 
this has been replaced, or at least the follower and camshaft have been replaced. We've seen them as low as in the 20,000 mile range and on up. A lot of these engines actually had a warranty extension on this part. Um, so if you're experiencing this issue, make sure you call the local dealership and give them your VIN and your mileage, and they can check to see if you have any kind of warranty extension so you don't have to pay for it. A lot of the performance guys are actually checking these about every 20,000 miles. So having it checked between 20 to 40,000 miles is actually a really good idea. Again, it's a pretty simple thing to DIY just to check it, or if you're having somebody do it, it shouldn't be all that expensive. And hey, 50 bucks to check to see if this is worn is a heck of a lot cheaper than having to pay for all of these parts to be replaced. On the replacement note, is it a DIY? Well, this is a DIY. This is the follower, no problem. This is the high pressure fuel pump. If you have to replace this, you're replacing this. Um, with the camshaft, it's not a terribly hard job. There are a couple of special tools that you really want to have in order to lock the camshafts in place. There's a special bit to remove the bolt for the cam adjuster on the exhaust cam. I think there's a lot of guys that don't take that off anymore. I actually had one break and wound up having to replace both camshafts, which wasn't all that fun. So as far as it being a DIY, again, the follower, yes. High pressure pump, probably. When you get into the camshaft, again, that's a pretty big job. Scraping all the goo off of the cam ladder, um, the sealant, is pretty tricky. It's pretty much the, uh, the worst part of the job, I think. You might be able to DIY it, you might not. If you're really handy and know what you're doing around an engine, yes. If not, you know, this one could easily get out of somebody's skill level. There are also a ton of high pressure fuel pump upgrades from a bunch of different companies. You know, some are purely performance based. Others I would assume would probably hold up a little bit longer than maybe the factory parts. I think they've all been redesigned at this point. So I don't know there's a need for an aftermarket high pressure fuel pump if you're running a stock car, but I know all the, uh, the FSI guys that have modified their two liter turbos, they're putting the high performance stuff in, which is not a bad idea. All right guys, there you have it. The failure of the FSI high pressure fuel pump and camshaft. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, humblemechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. Hey, one more shout out to deutschautoparts.com. They come by every Tuesday to make sure that I can do these videos for you guys, which is really cool. I really, I really appreciate all the support they've given, not only me, but to the community as well. So uh, thanks, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. You guys are rocking it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.